What is happening, everybody? It's your boy, Jimmy James, 59. And this week, we are looking at a build where you open with scouts and then transition into cavalry archers. Cavalry archers are a very effective unit in AoE 2 DE. You have range, mobility, they're quite durable. But to get there, you need to do quite a few things right. They take a lot of technologies to get fully upgraded. You need to really get them into a big mass of units. And you typically need to employ hit and run tactics, which means that you need to spend a lot of time watching them, microing, moving them across the map in order to get that big mass up and, and really make it an effective unit. So cavalry archers can often be a challenge for people, I think, in a low to mid elo category because... The, once you get to the mid game and then in the late game, it feels as though the game moves pretty fast for those of us at that level. And so I'm really hoping that this video is going to help you get some of those tips and tricks so that you can simplify your decision making in the mid game. And that way, you know what to do with cavalry archers and you can focus on keeping your macro and your economy straight and also make the right decisions so that way you can try to win the game or get up to the next age so i think this video is going to be really helpful for you and if you do find that this video is helpful for you i recommend that you like the video right so that way i can know that we're putting out something good for y'all and also go ahead follow the channel subscribe to the channel so that, that way you can get more content similar to this one With that being said i'm going to put the build order for the scouts opening up on the screen right now I'm not going to delve too much into it because I do have a previous build order video on 20 pop scouts and that's what we're going to play in this particular game. And I will say that every game I play and I will take you through the end of this game. Every game I play is on the ranked ladder and this game is at a mid 1300 ELO. So that's about the skill level we're looking at, which means you're not going to see a perfect game by either myself or the other player. And I think that that will also be good for us in some ways to identify places where where we can all improve. So with that, right, put the build on the screen. I'm not going to talk about it too much, but it's there if you want to pause the video, watch the opening, and then I'll put some tips and principles about how to get the cavalry archers. So let's just jump into this. And what I want to do right now is think about the map and really go into a little bit more of a cast of this game and take you through the thought process. So Already, this map is a decent one for scouts. One of the things that you're often going to think about when deciding what build to go for is you might look at your resources. So here we have back berries. This is very good because if we're opening with scouts, we're going to need a lot of food. And so losing these berries can be really, really bad if you're in a scouts opening. This isn't a terrible map here. It's a bit open at the top and we do have this main gold and one of the troubling things actually about this map and this main gold is that there's not a lot of places that we can wall to keep our gold safe we have to wall out a bit further in this area if we want to keep it safe maybe even put a forward tower on it so already this is looking as for a nice candidate for a scouts build because we're not going to need to take any gold until we get a bit deeper into feudal age and so i think that's going to help us out a lot here so with the back berries with a forward difficult to defend gold this is a pretty good scouts map for us here and so as you can see we're just getting to our lumber camp right now let's take a look at our opponent's base now our opponent's base i actually like his map quite a bit he has his main gold off to the side these walls he could probably get a decent wall off here if you wanted to defend that from ranged units and this this opening here right he can wall up here and that way he can defend his forward berries so he can actually go scouts himself on this map as well and honestly it's not a difficult map to wall up either so our opponent could play things very very defensively and so that can be very tough for a scouts build because once you get once your opponent gets walls up, it can be pretty difficult to do damage with your scouts. Typically at that point, you just want to scout the map. So anyways, we'll see if we can get to that point. But right now we see our opponent's going to berries. And 
at somewhere around this time, or actually really when the game is starting, you already want to start thinking about the civilization matchup. And humans are such a difficult civilization to predict. Humans can make a town center in feudal age, which is insane. You have very cheap stables and archery ranges, which enables you to get some really nice early aggressive strategies as well. So with humans, you really don't know what you're going to face. Now, one of the reasons I opted for a scouts build here as well is that if the human player is going for two town centers, then basically we can stop scout production, try to get up to the next age as fast as possible, seeding farms, getting the gold, and that way if we can get the castle age a bit faster, maybe we can get two town centers down if we need to do that, and try to catch up in villagers, or at least have the economy to defend us against, say, if, our, if he goes mass knights or something like that. And so, often with humans, if you do see uh, more castle age gameplay, you're typically either going to see, if they go for a castle, something like Kipcheks, and otherwise, they're a very strong cavalry sieve. <laughs> Opening scouts against humans can be pretty dangerous because human scouts, or in human cavalry in general, uh, gain speed throughout the ages. You do miss husbandry, and so the effect of human cavalry is that in feudal age, their scouts are going to be faster than your scouts. In castle age, once you research husbandry, you'll have the same speed as their cavalry. And then in imperial age, they're going to be faster than you as well. So it's very difficult to disengage, actually, from from human cavalry. But, right, we're just going to go ahead and we're going to do that here. And as you can see, right, we're already on the way up to the next age. We actually have no idle time at the TC in this build. Now, part of the reason we are playing with Indians, and so let me talk about Indians here for a second as well. Indians are... Indians are a limited civilization, right? Indians have great camels, right? Um, well, I mean, they do have really great camels. They get a lot of bonuses for them. Their camels do extra damage to buildings, which is really, really useful. You get an extra pierce armor in castle age and you'll have normal pierce armor in imperial age and this really needs to be a lumber camp right here uh yep okay we realized it then right again i told you gameplay is not going to be perfect here and and so those and you also have the imperial camel upgrade with indians however right um you know camels are pretty easily countered by halberdiers infantry ranged units because you still only get four pierce armor right with indians so camels are i think still a difficult option uh, even with indians and now you don't get arbalist and you don't get the night line either so when you're playing as indians oftentimes you feel really pressured to play cavalry archers from the jump as you can see right down here we're trying to get a little bit of distraction time with our opponent here uh, you see if we can get a vill kill, but at the minimum we are idling this economy. So again, just being annoying and And that way we can get our stable up and hopefully we can get a scout so you can see we're getting our eco upgrades Right double bit axe and bow saw so double bit axe not bow saw horse collar double bit axe and horse collar Sorry, and so we're doing pretty good here and we'll have a nice economy and we're making bills We had a little bit of idle time early as we were uh, attacking and doing some stuff, but it looks like we've stabilized. Now, right, we're starting to get these scouts out, and and so when you play with Indians, oftentimes you feel really pressured into cavalry archers, and so it's good to you know have a build like this kind of in your back pocket if you like playing with Indians or you random them on the ladder. There's some other strategies you can use. You can play camels. Uh, you can do some interesting plays with light cavalry as well and maybe crossbow but uh, minute arms openings are good indians have some really great openings it's just you get to the late game and things get a little bit difficult sometimes now what we're doing here right is that right our human player right is also opening scout and so on the one hand that's good for us and one of the things that we can see here is he has two stables right so this is really interesting Again, Cumans have the cheap stables, so this is very easy to do. And so what we're trying to do here is keep his scout numbers from getting too high and also try to wall up a bit at home, right? We're sending a villager out to go ahead and get that going. And we have our scouts. Now, 
it's worth thinking about whether two stables right here is the right play even if you have the wood for them you're probably not going to be able to produce out of more than one for quite a bit so it might enable you to get kind of an early scout lead which can be really important but Right, as you can see, right, our opponent really isn't producing for more than one, and it's still 100 wood. That could be basically, you know, almost a couple of farms, and getting your farms down is really, really important, right? As you can see, uh, we have, right, 12 farms already, and our opponent, right, has nine. So, um, we have the farm production going right now, and at this point, right, with the scouts, we're just trying to whittle his numbers down take fights and just honestly stay active right we want to stay active with our units and uh oh he's got a little scout army over here that's gonna start to move in again we're trying to get walled up here and uh, this is a fiasco and a half right if we weren't walled up we really should have had this area quick walled here right again i told you uh this is not going to be perfect gameplay in the slightest and it looks like here we're gonna lose two villagers now Keep in mind that we caused a lot of idle time for our opponent by being really active with our scouts. So even though we've lost three villagers here, which is terrible, um, we are going to, right? We're still actually up by about a villager and a half or so, uh, which is not bad. Uh, but again, that's something for your own gameplay. Uh, learn from my mistakes. I'll say that often. Learn from my mistakes. And if you're not walled up and you don't know where your enemy is, maybe try to get walled up because we knew what he was going for we could have easily quick walled in fact we could have quick walled here but we're just playing this uh we're just playing this uh pretty open here and we are trying to get walled up on this side we were just a bit slow to get there now at this point right we have a good number of farms right we have 15 farms and now we're moving out to gold and we want to get for cavalry archers well we're already thinking about how many villagers we're going to need on gold. You can see our food count is doing fairly well here, right? Again, we're keeping our idle TC time pretty low, and our opponent is seeding a lot of farms right now, but he just seeded them up pretty quickly here, so he's not really getting the production out of them quite yet, and we're just going to keep sending villagers to gold. Now, you need a lot of gold to make cavalry archers. Um, if you... Want to get exact numbers and things like that? I would check out uh, Survivalist has a website, and he also just has a fantastic YouTube channel. But he has a nice website that shows you how many villagers you need on a particular resource in order to generate constant production. Um, I tend to eyeball it a little bit more. I think if anything, you want to go a little bit over, right? You can see right now I'm getting the gold mining upgrade because I have all this excess food, even though we haven't quite clicked up yet. Um, we can almost click up so i'm just getting that because I, you want these gold miners to work fast so that way you don't need to have as many villagers assigned to your gold mines you're still going to need quite a bit but you want to get that uh, that upgrade in when you can and we should be clicking up here pretty soon we were just doing some attacking now we're getting our archery ranges down and so we're on the way up to the next age, and what you really want to think about here in terms of cavalry archers is, do you want to play more for economy and try to get to the late game, or do you want to play a bit more aggressively, right? If you're playing more aggressively, you want to go with something like three range cav archers. Um, if you're playing with a civilization like Hun, so even four ranges is pretty doable. But if you want to play more economically, you can go two ranges, and then when you get to the next age, Drop down, say, two town centers and just try to boom. But I personally find that that's pretty difficult for me, at least. Um, I find that cavalry archers, you need a really big mass of them to really to be really effective in terms of killing your opponent's army if you wind up facing them. And oftentimes you are going to see cavalry archers hit and run, moving across the map a lot. And so it's just nice to have... Uh, a big bunch of them but you can play you can play two range cav archers it's definitely doable and i don't think it's a bad build at all actually so but in this game as you can see we're going to play three range cavalry archers and we're going ahead right if you you can see on the other side of the screen we're getting all of our upgrades again i told you cav archers need a lot of upgrades we got to get horse collar we want to get the first armor upgrade in case our opponent makes skirmishers right so get to take out a scout right there and 
we also want to we're gonna need to get uh get bloodline so our cavalry archers are nice and tanky um when we get to the next stage you're gonna see right we're gonna get bodkin era right as we start producing these cavalry archers but we do have a good bit of food here right to to even though we even made three spears so we're going to get our wood chopping upgrade that's very important because cavalry archers are a unit that cost wood and gold and wood and gold units can be really really helpful actually for producing a lot of them and still trying to get to the next age and we're going to use this excess food here right this is a good tip that i will share with you right here is that you really want to spend your resources in fact and if you want other tips about about uh you know kind of like mid elo ish level gameplay i have a video on my top 10 tips to stay above to well to get to and stay above 1000 elo uh, i'll actually put that link in the description of this video and i highly recommend you check that out it's one of my more popular videos and a lot of people have said that it's helped them so uh, I hope you'll be able to benefit from that as well. And in this case, look, we had all this excess food. Hey, let's go ahead. Let's research some of these Cav Archer technologies. And we're going to get Thumb Ring. And again, we're playing this aggressively. And we're committing to an aggressive gameplay here. So instead of going for a town center, we're just going to go ahead and get our university up. So that way we can research ballistics. So we're not going to miss a lot of shots. Thumb ring is going to improve the accuracy of our cavalry archers quite a bit. And ballistics is going to make sure that they're able to lead shots that they fire. Now, our opponent's doing something interesting here, right? He's getting this armor upgrade, and now he's researching light cav. And so our opponent wants to go to stable light cavalry as his response to this. And it's a really interesting idea because, as you can see, right, our opponent has quite a bit of farms now right our farms right we've let them expire so that we can reassign villagers to wood and so we can keep making cavalry archers and so our opponent is going light cavalry which is so interesting he has a lot of farms and so i think it's it's, a, it's not a bad strategy here if he can get the mass of light cavalry up and so in order to deal with that prospect i'm going to add a few camels into this army and I'm going to go out here to try to get a town center up myself so we can take some more wood so that, that way we're going to be able to to get our economy rolling because our opponent's making light cav which means that he's using a lot of food and he's not going to be able to run two town centers at the same time continuously you can already see actually his idle town center time right is has gone up quite a bit because it takes a lot of food I mean, our opponent is spending that food, though. But again, he's not making a lot of light cavalry at this time. And, well, we're going to go ahead. We're going to take this fight. And our opponent's actually sacrificing a decent bit of light cavalry. Now, light cavalry are a trash unit. But that doesn't mean that they are inexpensive, right? One of the things, I think it's a misconception about trash units is that they're just really, really cheap. And so you can just toss them away. But that's actually not something you want to do in, with your trash units before you get to a, a, a mid to late Imperial Age setting. Because, again, these light cavalry cost 80 food, so you don't want to be throwing them away. And if you're going to play this light cavalry oriented strategy, you really need an advantage in numbers. If you do that, it can be very, very overwhelming. But if not, it can be pretty difficult. So... We're going to try to keep the pressure up on our opponent here and see if we can crack open this base and let ourselves in. And if anything, what we're doing is we're keeping his army at home so that he can deal with the difficulty of our units being here. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to send these spearmen inside just to scout around, see, see who's who in the zoo, so to speak. And our opponent is getting plus two armor, so I like that he's really committing to the strategy. So I think that's something that a lot of that a lot of mid to low elo players, and I do this in some games myself, is oftentimes we pick strategies and we don't commit to them, and the lack of commitment is just as much of a reason the strategy fails. It would be very easy for our opponent to second guess this decision to go with light cavalry, and him not right and him try to go into something else not have the economy set up 
and lose the game there. He really commits to it. Now, the problem there isn't really the macro decision, at least in my view. It's not the macro decision, but operationally speaking, he's throwing a lot of units away, and he really needs to get the light cavalry to a to a pretty nice mass because he's just remaking them again, and we're just going to keep attacking, right? So we're keeping his army, we're keeping his army still at home, right? And forcing him to remake these units, which again is going to cause quite a bit of idle TC time. Now, part of this is because we're both on two town centers now, so you should see our idle TC time, both of our idle TC time go up quite a bit. And he's having to make spearmen. We do lose a camel here. That is pretty unfortunate. I definitely didn't want to lose that. But we're just going to go ahead again, run away with cavalry archers. Don't be afraid to run away. That's the reason you're making them, so you can. You know, engage in what we might call a a tactical retreat. That was pretty bad micro right there, losing that cav archer in the middle of those of those spears. And so, so I'm looking at my base right now. Have a lot of wood, way too much wood built up. And so again, I want to try and spin it, spin it on cavalry archers. I will say, I think in this game, I haven't had enough villagers on gold. Um, there's not an idle archery range button per se. I've been a bit surprised that I've been able to keep my archery ranges going with uh, with not that many on gold. And you can see, actually, I'm trying to correct that here, getting an eighth on gold. Some of that might have been to do with having some excess gold buildup from getting the gold mining upgrade before we clicked up the castle age. Um, but now we're really trying to correct for that because, again, I want to get good production so that that way... If he gets a big light cav mass together, we're able to deal with it. And so, we're not really getting in here. And so we have, right, I'm putting down more stables because now, it's one of these things. His base, we've done a lot of eco damage to it. We've, we've even the villager count, we've caused some idle TC time, but... I'm a little bit worried he's building up a big light cavalry mass, and I'm already thinking about my next army composition i don't know what i'm going to need to go into and if i'm going to need to add in say a lot of camels or if i can switch to getting to a good unit composition with my cavalry archers and start adding in light cavalry so that i can deal with say any pikemen that my opponent might be making now again we're causing a little bit more idle time right again you see our opponent's idle tc time going up and well he's going to try and take this fight but we sit in this right right here for quite a minute and our opponent's going to try to get this around but we are going to just run away we do lose a cavalry archer again really unfortunate to be losing cav archers you don't want to lose a lot of those units our kill death ratio is still pretty good and again our opponent is taking these fights and losing a lot of light cavalry here right now we're losing some cavalry archers here and there and honestly we're just trying at this point we're really trying to be a nuisance save up get to the next age now i will tell you in this game i actually thought that right here i clicked up and apparently i hit the research light cavalry button right before i was gonna hit imperial the imperial age button so actually we spent a little bit of food that i didn't really mean to and we're running away now because we see scorpions Scorpions are actually a really effective counter unit against cavalry archers. So our opponent has his counters down fairly well. And given that he's investing though into scorpions, um, what I'm just trying to do is I'm trying to start to create a position and I'm thinking, okay, let's go ahead and let's get to our army composition here, right? We have a solid number of cav archers. We're going to need more. But what I want to do, I want to start getting the light cavalry. Because Indians, you do miss out on plate barding armor, but you get one pierce armor and castle age and imperial age each. And so that can be very, very effective for you, especially in castle age. And it's very nice when you're in imperial age because you basically start off with six pierce armor on your light cav. You don't have to wait for that technology to research. And so you can go ahead and start raiding your opponent pretty early. And so that can be pretty nice. Um, I think that for Indian camels, it's really awful to be uh missing the last armor tech indian camels used to have five pierce armor which was really really solid um but now with only four in imperial age 
Um, camels can be kind of a lackluster late game unit until you get to Imperial Camel, which is very expensive, especially in a 1v1. So again, we have 30 Cav Archers, and honestly what we're just trying to do is get our units up, so that way we can crack this base open. Now something to notice here, right? Up in the north, we're actually seeing a light Cav raid from our opponent. He's killed a number of villagers. We have a lot of villagers garrisoned in here, but these villagers aren't gonna be able to, to get away. And he's getting a lot of kills here, actually. And the big economic uh, lead we had with villagers, at least, we've lost quite a number of villagers because there was just really nowhere for them to go, unfortunately. And so that was, that was very unfortunate to lose. I mean, now we're down actually six villagers. So pretty unfortunate there. But Indian villagers are cheap. You can remake them. And so that's what we're going to do. And we're going to keep building our cavalry archer ranks up. We're going to keep getting to the light cav. And our goal here really is to see if we can start raiding our opponent sometime here in the near future. Right? As we try to get a town center up to defend this area up here. All right. Again, I told you, not going to be a perfect gameplay. So I think there, those villagers that were hanging around that TC probably should have just moved them on. And that way we could... We could have uh we could have our units uh we could have more villagers alive but it's still pretty close here and well we're gonna send these light cavalry in all right see if we can find some damage and we do see the scorpions and at this point this is a fight that we really really want to commit to right we want to take out these scorpions we want to kind of try and stay out of range of them with the cavalry archers and at this point hey Let's see if we can sacrifice these light cavalry and get those scorpions. I and mean, actually, we do a pretty nice job here. We get a number of kills. Meanwhile, we're being raided in the north, right? Which is something that we didn't see. We've lost another 10 villagers. So again, learn from my mistakes here. Quite a bit of raids. We're still doing a lot of damage to him, right? We're attacking a lot of his army, but we lost quite a bit. And this really shouldn't happen with two town centers here. Again, when you're just attacking at the same time, sometimes... Things are going on at your base, you don't realize it, and you can lose quite a few villagers to that. We've gotten quite a bit of eco kills as well, as you can see that's something that we're doing. And I think you can tell by the score that we're in a bit better position. You can tell from the military count, right, we're at 47 military, our opponent has nothing. And at this stage in the game, losing villagers, I mean, losing as many villagers as we lost is never a good thing. But we can go ahead and we can remake them, right? And we're not remaking them right now because we're spending a lot of our food on other things. And we actually don't have as many villagers to make things. So you can see it was a really nice raid from our opponent. But in terms of the value that he got out of it, I think it's a little bit more questionable given that we're on the way up to Imperial Age. Killing Vils is okay, but we can just remake those. We're going to go ahead Right, we're going to get Bracer on these Cavalry Archers. We have uh, we have enough wood, right, to get our trebuchets out. And again, right, we're in the late game here, so we're going for that Holy Trinity of Army Compositions, Gold Unit, Trash Unit, Siege Unit. And here, we want to go Cav Archer, Light Cav, and Trebuchets. Because we should be able to even up right the eco KD here, start to take out town centers, go in, do some raids, right? We've prevented the castle from getting up. Our opponent had to make this castle in the back, which isn't bad, but it's also it's, it's defending this main gold, which is nice. But we can just snipe that from here and stay out of the range of the castle. So um, as you can see, right, we're doing a lot of raids now. We're going to prevent this TC from coming up in the north, and all of a sudden, right. That Eco KD that really helped our opponent earlier, right? Um, it's just our idle time. Again, always keep your town centers running, right? As you can see, we just kind of figured that out. And, right, we could have had a much less gap in economy. And at this point, our opponent calls it, right? So, despite the fact that he got some really good raids on us, it really wasn't enough. I feel like I've been talking this entire time, which, again, is something to say that in these games... There is so much going on in a game of Age of Empires. There's probably a lot of things that I didn't get a chance to say that I really even wanted to say. So let's go ahead and check out the st stats for a moment. We'll come back to the map. As you can see, right, we did a nice job with our military getting lots of unit kills. Economically, 
we did a pretty good job here, right? Um, aside from those late game sort of desperation raids from our opponent that did do, that did do some damage, uh, we out ecoed him. Our uptimes were pretty good. Could have had a little bit early castle time, and as you saw, we could have had a much early imperial age time. It's just something I thought I clicked. Hey, it happens. Um, like I said, not a perfect game, and you can see our villagers here. So going back to the map, right? Thinking about it in this video. You know, I hope that this showed you some ways that you can play with cavalry archers. You'll notice we did a lot of hit and run tactics earlier on in Castle Age. And then when we got to Imperial Age and we had this big mass, that's when we can start playing stationary and taking some fights and really just, you know, and really just, uh, you know, taking out our opponent and that way clearing the way for our light cavalry to go through and get some raids. And so we put ourselves in a really nice military position with a really good army composition that could basically at this point just be unstoppable. So that's the build, right? That Those are the principles. That's the game. And I hope this was really enjoyable to you. And I hope that it is something that gives you a way to think about playing this opening into this composition in the future. And so again, if this video has helped you right go ahead you know smash that like button and if you want to see this kind of content tier list we have a lot of content coming out these days go ahead and subscribe to the channel but with that i'll let you guys go here and i'm jimmy james 59 i'll see you out in the ladder